talk of the day. Uh, he'll be telling us about local commercial privacy and learning. Uh, afterwards, there's a reception right outside. You won't miss it. Uh, so I plan to just stick around a little bit after the talk. All right. And yeah. Yeah. Take it. Thank you. Uh, so uh, compared to the wonderful talks by uh, Kunal and, and Kabi, uh, there's going to be, a, uh, like, right, compared to Kunal's talk, there's going to be a, uh, fewer proofs. Uh, so I want you to kind of lower or raise your expectations, depending on how you feel. Like, anyways, like reset your expectations. So um, uh, what is, um, so when we talk about local, so, so far we've been talking about the just plain differential privacy. Uh, as I, I'll be speaking about local differential privacy, I want to define it relative to what's not local, which is central. And the central differential privacy for the purpose of this talk is going to be your uh, standard definition of privacy. And um, uh, when we have a single curator that interacts with a database, uh, or a like single analyst who issues queries uh, uh, to a database, and uh, uh, we care about differential privacy of the entire transcript of, its inter of his interaction. Uh, uh, and by the way, like the colors are very washed out, so kind of you're supposed to be seeing some light salad green. Uh, uh, you don't. So like, b trust me. Uh, so each of these interactions is uh, locally differentially private, and that what it means is that data is held by its original owner. Instead of pooling their data in a, into a single data set, they are holding on to their own individual records. They are minding their own data. Uh, and uh, whenever they interact with the curator or anyone else in the world, they are like, uh, they're wearing this like tinfoil hats, like they're worrying about the world being against themselves, like be, the entire world being against them. So they're, they're taking count each participant to the data set uh, considers its entire interaction, uh, interaction with, the, with the world as uh, uh, a transcript um, uh, of, uh, that reflects its sensitive content. So this is the standard definition of differential privacy. And uh, like you've seen it a uh, hundred times before. You've seen it a bunch of, time today, uh, bunch of times today, uh, and the traits uh, the distribution of the output on database D is nearly the same as uh, uh, the output on NMD prime for all adjacent databases D and D prime. And this word adjacent, or neighboring databases, uh, it's, it's very application dependent. Like sometimes we talk about the, uh, uh, the uh, entry like level privacy when we are talking, guaranteeing privacy to a single action that a person takes. We like to talk about uh, uh, two databases being uh, adjacent or neighboring when the different contributions of a single individual, but like we can consider different units of granularity. And local differential privacy takes it to the 11th. So uh, uh, we want the distribution of the, uh, of the transcripts be close for all possible inputs. The um, uh, uh, of course, like under this definition, we won't be able to, to do much, but uh, kind of you have to uh, realize that as uh, the definition applies to each individual record, all together, like across all the records, we are able to learn something not real about, about, uh, about the world. And this is what this part of uh, our tutorial is going to be about. How to protect, uh, uh, to offer this relatively extreme level of privacy while doing something useful. And uh, we call it local differential privacy, and I'll say in a few slides where, uh, uh, kind of, uh, where, where this phrase, appear, uh, phrase appeared. It's interesting to know that what uh, uh, we would now call local differential, differential private mechanisms actually precedes the notion of differential privacy. So uh, uh, the uh, well, uh, extremely well uh, studied uh, and like storied uh, method from statistics called randomized response. And like I put together the original reference uh, going back to 1965 by Stanley Warner. Uh, I put uh, here just like a 
basically like a random monograph uh, 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 just about the randomized response and its multiple variants. Uh, and uh, this method, what we now recognize as a uh, prototypical local dif dif differentially private mechanism, uh, was proposed uh, to elicit uh, answers to sensitive questions. And to give an example, not completely random, uh, I uh, uh, take uh, this question, uh, are you a citizen of, of the United States? Or are you a legal resident of the United States? And to apply this method, we consider this question and its complement, which is, are you not a citizen of, of this United States? And according to the original Warner's method, uh, a person uh, ch chooses privately without revealing its, uh, its, um, its random coins, or chooses privately and randomly without revealing its random coins, which of the two questions uh, uh, the person is going to answer. Uh, and then um, uh, it becomes a truly like elementary statistic, like just an exercise uh, to uh, back out of the, uh, so uh, if uh, e each, uh, each person follows this procedure, uh, and uh, theta is the true fraction of people who are citizens in the sample. Uh, like, by the way, do, do you know what is the approximate number of citizens in this country? 300 million? Oh, the percentage wise. Oh, true fraction of citizens? Yes. Yeah. Among people living in the US? Yes. Make a guess. 90%. A bit less than that, like eight to seven percent. So, uh, if uh, theta is the actual fraction of citizens, uh, then um, and if each person follows the, this, this procedure, then the number of yes, the fraction of the yeses, will be uh, given by this formula. And for, from this, you can back out uh, a unbiased estimator uh, for for this fraction. Uh, and you can compute all kinds of. Uh, um, uh, the concentration bounds, the uh, variance, etc. Uh, what about privacy? Uh, it's again uh, uh, just consider this this one interaction with the world. Uh, with probability p, a person answers question one. With probability minus p, it answers the question with the opposite answer. And it's very it's trivial to see that the uh, this interaction satisfies uh, this level of differential privacy. And here I'm assuming that uh, p is uh, uh, larger than one half. No, the opposite, yes, less, less than one half. Um, so um, uh, here kind of I'm showing my uh, favorite pictures um, that uh, we put together to explain local differential, pri differential privacy or randomized response to uh, people uh, who kind of would have problem interpreting the slide. And uh, I uh, kind of, I'm sure that uh, uh, every one of you could kind of follow every last line of the slide. Uh, so these pictures are that you can use to show kind of the why randomized response is an effective technique uh, to uh, people without mathematical background. So um, imagine uh, that like uh, we have this uh, like uh, this population, and people like can arrange themselves uh, in the like uh, uh, in this um, uh, image of Mona Lisa, and each person holds on to their own private value. No, uh, will flip with probability twenty five percent each of this uh, 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 each of these bits. And locally, we can see that like, we offer a non-trivial level of, of privacy to each of, to each of the individuals. Uh, and uh, non-trivial and quantifiable level of privacy. But if you zoom out, then uh, we can still very much recognize Mona Lisa. Yeah. So um, uh, if uh, uh, our purpose in conducting this experiment was to kind of learn how uh, uh, like Renaissance women look like, like we succeeded. Pixel <laughs> <laughs> privacy. Yeah. 
so uh, uh, the uh, even like uh, this relatively trivial, trivial formulation of randomized response that I offered allows for some, for some interesting, creative, and uh, highly original work. Uh, uh, for example, the one which I uh, like a lot uh, was a protocol by Tal Moran and Moni Nauer, uh, who described how to enforce the correct probability of uh, kind of lying or like flipping your bit uh, using uh, scratch cards. So uh, if you follow the protocol, then you'll end up, and like I won't, I'm not going to describe the protocol itself, just kind of there's a reference and there's like, the protocol is very simple, it like fits on a single, um, single slide. If you follow the, pro the protocol, uh, then you um, either end up sampling your bit for the, from a correct distribution, uh, or uh, you uh, kind of uh, end up with an invalid uh, scratch card. Obviously, you can lie about your input, like to yourself, like you can be delusional, like the scratch card protocol is not going to help you. But if you're kind of um, sort of not kind of are going to participate in the protocol, then it, uh, the, there's uh, no, uh, it removes the requirement of like flipping a bit uh, in uh, like behind the scenes and not telling everyone about it. Okay, so now on to the a bit more like coming uh, 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 coming uh, in uh, like looking at more recent history. So uh, local differential privacy uh, uh, appeared like was described in several in separate communities under different names, uh, and like put I put down a few references that are like appear uh, often in papers that talk about the local differential private model. Uh, but this is the paper that, uh, uh, that introduced um, uh, the coined the term local differential private model, right? Was it? Uh, and uh, uh, so it introduced the model. It uh, proved a, a very uh, significant result uh, uh, stating that classes learnable that model are uh, uh, exactly the same classes uh, of, um, of concept classes that are learnable in the statistical query model. Um, it uh, demonstrated an efficient uh, 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 differential private <coughs> local LGP learning for the parity function, uh, which um, separates it from, um, sorry, 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 I misspoke. So it, it uh, demonstrated an efficient differential private learner non in the, in the lone local model for the privacy function that separated the central differential privacy from the local differential private models. Uh, yeah, and uh, so it did demonstrate that these models are, are uh, 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 meaningfully different. Uh, and uh, in kind of in this uh, uh, in the middle part of the talk, uh, I'll go through several canonical problems in local differential privacy. And uh, uh, before I do that, I want to give you some opportunity to ask questions about the model itself. Uh, so I'll say a few words. Uh, so uh, it's important to uh, differentiate between the definition and an architecture. So uh, the definition of local differential privacy doesn't tell you uh, who's doing what in what sequence. In particular, when we talk about local differential privacy, I, it's convenient to think of uh, people holding on to their own data. Oftentimes, it's, um, it's more efficient to implement uh, the LDP model by kind of pulling uh, data together, by, uh, by pulling data in the central repository, randomizing it in the repository, and, uh, 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 and uh, only storing this randomized data, right? So I uh, want you to kind of uh, keep it, and uh, I'll make even a stronger statement that um, any particular protocol, any particular uh, uh, architecture uh, can simultaneously, simultaneously satisfy multiple definitions of privacy. 
So, uh, for example, uh, and uh, some of our recent work uh, does fall into this category. Uh, we can orchestrate a competition between multiple parties such that each of them uh, enjoys some level of local differential privacy. But uh, what the central uh, server sees uh, satisfies central differential privacy. Yeah. So the protocol is the same. It's the, uh, and it simultaneously satisfies a list of uh, uh, different privacy, pr privacy definitions. <coughs> yeah. uh, so, uh, uh, and I think uh, kind of mm, there's an ongoing argument whether like differential privacy uh, somehow like it's like a fig leaf or like kind of whitewashes. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I've been waiting you. I, I should kind of. No, no, yeah. I'm, I'm, this is going to be elementary. I'm mean, going to always have to apologize before I ask these questions. If companies are not using deciding whether to utilize the local differential privacy model versus the centralized one, um, is, it a is there a technical reason to do the one or the other, or is it rather a question where the company says, um, the, you know, the users don't trust me, because if the users trusted me, they would just give the data and then I would do the analysis, and maybe, is that the optimal thing? Or, are there technical reasons for preferring the local differential privacy, not just the trust reason? So, uh, 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 technically, like mathematically, uh, the central model uh, is uh, offers uh, better accuracy and uh, much higher efficiency. Like computational costs are much lower compared to the local differ differential private model. So if you don't care about privacy, then um, uh, th left to their own devices, uh, it's in virtual majority of cases, it's cheaper to pull data like into a single repository and, and keep it there. I can come up with like some uh, examples where it might not be the case. For example, um, if the computation, especially like if the up, like, uh, uploads are particularly expensive, uh, you want to minimize what uh, uh, travels from user devices to uh, to, the, to, to, to the centrally. And there's an asymmetry, like for your cell phone, to uh, send data out. Uh, costs much more than to receive data from it. So uh, there are some kind of niche cases where you can make a technical arg argument for local differential privacy, uh, but uh, realistically, uh, it all comes down to the question of uh, uh, trust and what companies can like want want to collect. Oftentimes, uh, they understand the risks and they would much rather not touch the data or touch it, but like at a very uh, uh, using this very kind of uh, narrow interface. So maybe, maybe you could speak a little more about this issue of trust, uh, like from your experience, um, whether this is something that the company can measure or like how, how these decisions are made. And, and the related question is whether these decisions are, whether these decisions are also related to you know uh, fear. Uh, uh, more about subpoena or something like that. Is this a, a real thing for for companies? Okay, so uh, like uh, while we speak about companies, um, you have to understand that like the companies are not monoliths, and uh, uh, this like local differential privacy and like uh, distributed protocols are run inside companies too. So whatever like my view of the world is, <laughs> uh, can be very different from. Uh, uh, view of the same problem from like the C office or from like the legal office. Uh, so uh, uh, I don't think that kind of mm, uh, I can, in all fairness, answer this question like based on my experience. But uh, 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 so uh, uh, in what I've seen, the uh, uh, 
uh, kind of the uh, like large sophisticated companies like Google and Microsoft, uh, the uh, understand that some data is better not or is better left not collected. Uh, so it's not it's like the question of trust and liability. I would say that like it's. Uh, Liability, not in the legal sense, but in the sense that, like, oh my God, like if we bring this data in, it increases, it incurs all kinds of costs. Uh, and but it's a constant dialogue uh, within the company, like between like various offices, and uh, it, it's it, it gets remarkably. Uh, it's also history dependent, uh, but uh, uh, it's also kind of companies are watching what kind of uh, the press is saying, what the press is saying about other companies. So uh, we are all pa part of this like uh, very many-voiced conversation. Just uh, one part of Kobe's question was, are you aware of any measurement taken to sort of quantify yeah, uh, this decision? Or that the two sides of the decision? Uh, I I... So uh, there is... Uh, there are constant measurements taken to uh, uh, to evaluate whether uh, cust cons customers understand privacy policies and how they respond to them. Uh, I'm, uh, but I'm not conducting the studies, and like I haven't, uh, like I haven't seen a decision being made on the basis of the study alone. It like feeds into this, like into this uh, understanding what what uh, what is uh, uh, currently acceptable uh, and like how the privacy policy gets gets crafted. I'm sorry for like not giving you kind of a crisp, satisfying answer, but uh, it's also a reality of working in a corporation with like uh, two hundred thousand uh, employees that uh, they're like. Uh, there are like multiple trees shaking at the same time by multiple <laughs> individuals and um, yep. Okay, so uh, now back to the math. So uh, uh, let's... <laughs> uh, and, and, it, uh, and, and try to laugh. <laughs> um, so... Um, uh, uh, let me introduce a few canonical problems uh, that are interesting and like uh, allow uh, uh, meaty and non-trivial solutions in the local differential privacy model. So uh, 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 one problem that was uh, uh, I think it goes kind of uh, in the it's in the original formulation goes back to Warner like to the random random response, but uh, it's. Um, uh, it's low bound and it's complex. Like its uh, um, uh, treatment was uh, was initiated by uh, Bemel uh, and Kobe and Omri, um, uh, and it's about uh, learning the population mean. So each person holds on to their uh, binary uh, to their bit, uh, and we want to com compute the sum of these bits. Uh, so uh, without uh, uh, the local differential, pri differential privacy constraint, if we uh, could aggregate these bits together, we could compute their sum with epsilon differential privacy with an error which would be inversely proportional to, to epsilon. <laughs> so uh, the uh, uh, kind of, we'd like to see how uh, low the error for in the local differential private model, model can go. Can go. Uh, so any error that is much larger than one over epsilon will separate the models. Will tell us that uh, we can do more in the central case than we can do in the local case. Uh, oops, my uh, 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 my animation is off. But um, uh, so um, uh, consider the following experiment: uh, each person randomly selects one of their bits. So initially, all their bits are truly random. Uh, they uh, engage in the protocol. And the way I drew it, it's a central uh, uh, party communicating with each of these individuals. It doesn't have to be this way. The uh, communication graph can be arbitrary. And one uh, uh, basic fact 
um, in, uh, uh, in the communication theory is that conditioned on the transcript, the bits that were independent of one another will stay independent. And like, the first time I saw it, I kind of didn't believe it. Uh, the second time, I didn't believe it either. But like, uh, it takes kind of it is exercise to uh, to verify that exchanging messages, of course, condition conditions the bit of the party that sent the message, but doesn't introduce any dependencies. Yep. So the bits are still independent, and because of the local deep pressure privacy constraint, conditioned on the transcript. Each of the bit will retain some non-trivial entropy. And then, uh, here kind of I um, cite Barry Essen uh, theorem, which is like a heavy hammer. They're like, because we are talking about like bi uh, binary values that like uh, uh, are um, uh, separated from, uh, from uh, 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 either zero or one, you can actually prove a, uh, a very simple uh, anti-concentration equality, and Barry Essen uh, uh, is a, basically a quantify, quantified version uh, of the central limit theorem. What it says is that, like, like just the constants are explicit. Um, uh, so uh, uh, conditioned on the transcript, the sum of the of the bits. Uh, will uh, uh, be spread over an interval uh, of the size of roughly square root of n around n over 2. So any estimator that is trying to, um, uh, to uh, uh, compute, uh, uh, to approximate the sum of the bits, will make a, an error of the order of square root of n with like, some explicit dependency on epsilon. Uh, and uh, so just think about it. As uh, um, in the central differential private keys, the error uh, of, the, uh, of the sum is independent of n. It only depends on the privacy parameter epsilon. In the local differential private key, privacy keys, it increases with n. OK, so. Um, uh, it tells us that the local differential private model is fundamentally more challenging to operate in than the central model. The next uh, uh, canonical problem in LDP is uh, learning what's called heavy heaters. So let me describe, like introduce the problem. Uh, and uh, um, so the papers that uh, kind of uh, made uh, uh, significant progress on this problem uh, we first, first by, uh, came out of Google by uh, Ulver, uh, uh, Alexander, and, and Vasil, Vasil Pihur, uh, then uh, Rayev and Adam, and then like the New Europe's paper from 2017 is the one on which I'm kind of, I'll mostly follow my presentation. So the heavy hitters. Or it was before the name of the conference was just. That's right. I uh, changed the name retroactively. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so the heavy hitters problem uh, is the following. We have a distribution over some, some universe, and the sub size of this universe is going to be uh, some of her, uh, our concerns. Uh, and we want to output uh, the items, uh, uh, the top k items out of this universe, the items with the heavy support, uh, and uh, together with their frequencies, and we'll be trying to minimize the L infinity distance, like the worst error over these k items. And the items which are uh, kind of uh, didn't make the cut will say that uh, their kind of imputed frequency is less, is like is, is zero. So the kind of uh, uh, explicitly we should compute frequencies for k items, and implicitly for everyone else we set it to zero. So. Um, um, uh, kind of as a first cut, like just uh, designing this, uh, solving the heavy hitters problem in the local differential, right? and and how is it related to the uh, LDP model? Each person holds a uh, 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 an element of the universe, 
and the histogram uh, for which we are trying to compute heavy, heavy hitters is the distribution over these people. Yep. So we interact with a single person holding on to their element of the universe at a time. So uh, let's uh, forget about privacy for a moment. Let's just talk about uh, communication complexity and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, in the no private case. We'll be using what's called the, what was introduced as the count sketch in 2002 by Chariker and, Tar and others. Uh, I think now the standard name is the count mean sketch. Um, and uh, it's, uh, uh, it, has, it takes the following form. Each client, it has its own uh, element of the universe, say a string, and it has uh, two hash functions. Uh, one hash function, or like, you know what? It has uh, two uh, times k functions. It has, uh, for each uh, uh, k, for each line of this matrix, it has exactly two functions. One function is an index uh, in the column of a matrix. And the second function is just a, uh, it's a, it's a sign, plus or minus one. And the definition of the sketch is the following. We take the string uh, for each of the key uh, 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 lines of the matrix. We apply uh, uh, the first function. It selects a column and we'll put in this column uh, 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 the uh, uh, plus or minus one, where the uh, sign is given by the second hash function. Uh, and we'll send uh, this matrices to the server. And of course, like uh, in reality, like you don't have to send, you, you don't have to send the zeros. Like you'll just send the index and uh, the uh, the sign in this index. The server on its end will compute the sum of these little matrices and it will use the sum to construct a frequency oracle. What is a frequency oracle? Given an arbitrary string, uh, uh, arbitrary element of the universe, uh, it will go through each of the lines of this metric, of this uh, matrix that it computed and uh, uh, for uh, it uh, makes this metal computation. Uh, uh, what uh, what column would the ith hash function select for the string? And it will take uh, uh, the element of this matrix with the sign that um, each of the clients would pick for this uh, for the string. Yep. And. Uh, 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 it's uh, uh, kind of uh, it's relatively easy to see that uh, what we end up with, and, and uh, so it gets this estimate for a number uh, for the support of a string for each of the of the rows of this matrix, and it will compute the median among these estimates. Uh, so uh, uh, conditioned uh, or. Um, over the choice of the hash functions. This is an unbiased estimator for the support of a string. When we take the median, we uh, get very nice concentration bounds. Uh, and uh, 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 the, original, the original count mean sketch, the proof, again, I won't do it here, they'll prove uh, some uh, 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 strong uh, uh, L2 uh, error bound on the like L2 bound on the uh, uh, on the uh, total error. We are interested in the L infinity bound, so kind of there's uh, like uh, it's not kind of we have to use some like uh, there's some work required to adapt the result, but like basically uh, it's if you, it's um, uh, one has to follow um, the original paper. Okay, so that was the. Uh, uh, just by the book application of the count mean sketch, uh, how to add privacy to it. So uh, first, uh, instead of the each client sending uh, k rows, 
uh, we'll make a, each client uh, pick one row at random. Why is that? Because uh, 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 if uh, you uh, uh, drew, do this like privacy calculus, and it, it, it ends up more efficient. Like you boost uh, the signal to noise ratio, to, so to speak, by putting all your kind of eggs in one basket and sending this basket rather than spreading them around. And but this metaphor doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, actually, kind of the right metaphor that uh, uh, that uh, Abradip uh, likes to use is the following. Uh, so <laughs> uh, you have a toast. Uh, and uh, uh, there is a uh, uh, a jam on this toast, and you are like uh, asked to to say whether it's a strawberry jam or uh, uh, or um, orange jam. And uh, you can have like two strategies. One is to kind of take a bite out of this toast, but chances are you'll miss this like one drop of jam. Or you can spread the jam around. Uh, take a bite, uh, and this way, kind of, you'll have a much better chance of uh, of uh, um, of producing the right answer. Uh, okay, so uh, here, like, we uh, uh, sample a row in this uh, in this uh, from this little matrix. The server will have to kind of scale this uh, this sum up, uh, summation up. Tell the server which row we chose. Yeah. That's right, yes, yes. Rather than each person contributing to all the rows, each person just picks one row and contributes just to uh, But it says we throw it Yeah. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Uh, yep. And um, so the server, uh, yep. So the client uh, picks one of the rows of the matrix and then applies a three-way randomized response, like instead of randomizing between two options, it ram randomizes between three options. But uh, uh, it's uh, kind of the math is, is relatively simple, and the server can recover the uh, unbiased estimates for the counts of this, of this metrics and uh, implement the same um, uh, frequency oracle as it did before without privacy. So privacy happens here. On the server side, it has to compensate for the noise that was introduced by the, by the clients, but uh, it's a uh, relatively simple operation. So now, like, uh, uh, the algorithm, uh, the basic algorithm is very simple. Uh, you, you kind of have ability to, uh, uh, to uh, compute this uh, 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 to approximate frequencies. Now, uh, uh, you go through the entire universe, uh, pick the k heaviest heaters and declare a victory, right? Uh, two things that uh, kind of one has to be aware of: uh, to do a false discovery rate because uh, these estimates are going to be noisy, and you don't want to output heavy heaters that uh, are just got there because of noise. So this is just kind of right. Like you want to do uh, correct statistics here, but second. The universe can be uh, uh, can be excessively large. Uh, it can be like all words in the dictionary or all words that you don't uh, you didn't know existed. Uh, and in the example that Abradip likes to uh, likes to offer, uh, it's uh, learning um, the keyboard in Mandarin, uh, where uh, it's common to kind of invent new combination of characters. Uh, that are just not part of any dictionary, like because like people want to be playful, want to avoid some kind of a, uh, uh, some kind of uh, censorship uh, for whatever reasons, uh, or like there's like some recent memes. Uh, so you just this universe it exists. Uh, it's li it's reasonable to limit the universe to um, like six, like a sequence of six uh, 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 Mandarin characters. But it's still humongous. So how do you solve this problem? Uh, so uh, uh, there's uh, a uh, uh, you do it by uh, uh, asking clients to uh, take a word that they would have sent and chopping it at a random point, like just uh, choosing a random prefix uh, of this word. And now on the server side, it starts. So I kind of don't didn't list Mandarin characters, like I'll be sticking with the uh, Latin alphabet. 
So uh, the server starts with the uh, 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 prefixes of uh, one uh, letter uh, each. It does, it selects the heavy hitters from these prefixes. The prefixes that do have some non-trivial support, they progress to the second round, they get expanded, uh, etc. And uh, why don't we get um, combinatorial, combinatorial explosion by following this protocol? Because in each level, we'll be looking at the k heaviest hitters. <coughs> and it's obvious that the, uh, 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 the true heavy hitters will have uh, all the prefixes will be heavy hitters too. But you have to kind of not going to be exactly k, uh, like you have to kind of set up your parameters correctly. Okay, so uh, 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 so I covered uh, uh, two uh, 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 problems uh, uh, that had to do with heavy hitters. Now, uh, like let's tear closer to uh, the stated uh, topic of this tutorial, which is machine learning, uh, and uh, let's talk about um, uh, convex optimization uh, that some people still care about. I've heard. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, uh, in a Fox paper from 2013, uh, uh, Deutsche the uh, uh, demonstrated that a basically HDD algorithm uh, achieves a, a, uh, uh, this guarantee uh, with a, uh, uh, for uh, when it's applied to a convex loss function, uh, which is. Um, uh, one Lipschitz for uh, all data sets uh, in, uh, in its support. And uh, let's ponder this, uh, this formula, like this guarantee for a bit. So one over epsilon is something that we're well familiar th with and like it'd be it's kind of very natural to find it here. Uh, but this multiplicative, multiplicative term kind of sucks. So uh, it's th it has both dependency on uh, Mm, uh, on uh, the dimensionality, it gets worse as dimension gets higher, and uh, uh, mm, it has this uh, uh, well, kind of no. I think this is good dependency. One, one over square root of n, like that's as good as it gets. Well, then, what is? I need the number of uh, uh, the number of uh, participants of the protocol. Yeah. So this is a good dependency. One, one over epsilon square root of n is good. It's the dependency on, on the dimensionality, which is. Uh, so uh, let's pause this uh, uh, problem of convex optimization. Uh, let's put it in the hole for a second and consider the problem of learning the median. And uh, uh, this problem was uh, 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 was uh, addressed in this beautiful paper by uh, Adam and others. Uh, so. Um, uh, we are very much used to uh, this privacy accuracy trade-offs, but kind of what this paper was the uh, the insight of that paper was that um, for in the local differential private model, interactivity is a huge cost, and uh, in reality can be the main uh, uh, obstruction, like main impediment to implementation, because. Um, uh, sort of like in the central model, when you're doing computation, that's annoying, but like kind of you have to do computation. In the local differential, differential private model, uh, each round of communication uh, is hugely expensive. And it makes a difference uh, 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 in like running a uh, service that collects data from, uh, from clients is very different from a service that wants to talk to clients. <laughs> and uh, uh, in the uh, local differential private model, uh, the, this dimensionality, the number of rounds of interaction, is a very significant uh, 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 is a very significant characteristic of your protocol. And uh, if we go uh, back to uh, to the previous slide to Du uh, Chatao, uh, their HDD based proto uh, algorithm takes the number of interactions 
which is proportional to the number of participants. Like it's as interactive as it gets. Uh, it kind of uh, uh, for each new step of the of the algorithm, it has to talk to uh, it has to update its internal state and talk to a different person. Um, and uh, in 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 practice, like these round trips become the major cost of like the major drag on your implementation. Um, so uh, let's consider like a the ver uh, uh, really the uh, I would say a canonical example of a one-dimensional convex problem, which is computing the median. And the median is uh, the uh, the, ob the minimizer of the kind of L uh, the sum of the L1 distances from uh, from points on a single on a one-dimensional line. Uh, so. Uh, uh, without thinking too much, how would we solve the finding the median using the binary search? We have some bounds on where the median might live, and we'll ask uh, uh, people using our uh, uh, favorite uh, randomized response protocol uh, whether uh, what is the fraction of people uh, who have uh, data to the right of the median between A and B. Uh, and then, kind of, we'll be updating, like we'll be doing this binary search. Like, if more people end up on the left, we'll be like drilling down to the left. Uh, so uh, it's nice and good, but it requires uh, uh, multiple interactions to get uh, close to the median. So when when you say interaction, do you mean? I'm updating the question to a new That's right. person. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, uh, yeah. so you can uh, uh, any one person uh, only speaks once, yeah. but you have to update your internal state uh, in between questions. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, uh, uh, and this is like a super nice uh, 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 problem to, to think about, and uh, I'm so glad that uh, Adam and others like solved it for us. And my uh, uh, animation is wrong here; it's like off too. Uh, but here's the protocol, how the protocol would look like. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, divide. Uh, uh, so this is the range where the medium might live. We'll divide it into halves. Uh, and uh, for um, uh, people who are uh, we assigned to the first cohort, we'll ask kind of your value. Does it live in the left half or the right half? It's like a binary answer, left or right. Yeah. And we'll uh, 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 make them send us, uh, send us uh, their input using randomized response. For people in the uh, second cohort, we'll ask two questions. Uh, so suppose uh, like my median, uh, my value lives here. Then uh, here uh, for uh, this pair, I'll, uh, uh, I'm asked to submit uh, my true answer is going to be R, which I'll send with uh, uh, while preserving privacy using, using randomized response. For this pair, I'll send random answer. So for, peop for people in the, in the second cohort, they'll send two answers. One of them is going to be correlated with, uh, with where their uh, median lives, and the other is going to be totally off the wall. For people in the third cohort, they'll be answering how many? Four questions. Uh, one question is going to be uh, correlated with uh, the half where their true median lives. And the other three questions are going to be truly totally random. And uh, uh, it's uh, once kind of I think uh, once the protocol is out there, like it's the analysis sort of like writes itself. Um, uh, and the number of samples, which is uh, the true complexity cost for uh, in which we like to measure locally differential, locally differential, differentially private protocols. Uh, is uh, uh, has like these very nice dependencies on epsilons and the um, uh, the uh, uh, the target error. 
the remarkable fact about this protocol is that it's completely non-interactive. We'll assign people, like, or people will kind of uh, 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 draw the, cho choose their assignments randomly. They all execute their protocols locally. We pull their answers together, and uh, uh, out uh, comes the, a very good approximation to the median. Uh, so what about, uh, so I asked you earlier to suspend uh, the question about optimization of convex functions or convex optimization uh, for uh, the uh, uh, one-dimensional case or for a small-dimensional case, it reduces to the median again, thanks to like the, the reduction is non-standard. It was uh, uh, demonstrated in, in the paper. But kind of the, uh, uh, the, the bummer is that the uh, sample complexity is going to be exponential in the number of dimensions. And um, uh, the paper sort of makes a fairly persuasive argument that it uh, may not be avoidable, or at least uh, uh, it rules out a class of non-adaptive protocols that are based uh, on stochastic gradient descent methods, or which includes methods which are based in stochastic gradient descent for some um, artificially constructed uh, function. So uh, now, like I only have a few minutes left, but uh, I covered the theory of uh, local differential privacy. Now let me uh, say a few words about uh, its application practice. And um, uh, kind of as it often happens, applications came before theory. Um, uh, but now I think kind of uh, it's now kind of the onus is on the applications to catch up to existing theory. So kind of theory leapfrogged uh, uh, applications as we know it. So uh, uh, in about uh, uh, 20, um, uh, 2014, there was an epidemic of uh, what's called in Google unwanted software, which reads ooze. Uh, so there was an epidemic of uh, software that was taking over uh, uh, Chrome installations. And you may have seen it, or you may have seen it on your parents' computers. Uh, the, uh, uh, some uh, kind of uh, 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 like uh, ad networks uh, taking over the search engine or just like completely uh, like spamming your uh, screen with, the, uh, with ads. Uh, and uh, uh, it uh, uh, in uh, Google. Uh, Google is a very data-driven data -driven company. Uh, uh, if you can, if you cannot measure it, you cannot manage it. Um, and uh, the first reflex was to understand the extent of the problem. But uh, what kind of got into the way of collecting this very important information of what search engines uh, people's browsers are set to, and some non-trivial uh, non number of the search engines were malicious, like we were kind of actually making their experience much worse. So uh, what prevented uh, Google uh, Chrome from learning this information was a very enlightened, very kind of strongly worded, very readable privacy policy that effectively said that uh, in the time that uh, only information that could be collected uh, by Chrome uh, uh, um, from the browser was something that could help the user in the moment when it was collected. So when you were about to uh, go to a malware website and it was on a black uh, on a blacklist, then the browser, legitimately according to the policy, could go to the backend and check whether it's still on the blacklist, whether it's like a false positive or not. If it was, it would like flash like red and say, don't go there. Okay. That was like about the level of uh, uh, like a immediate threat that justified uh, uh, communication information that happened in the browser to the backend. But um, uh, it was uh, obvious to uh, people in the room, and like you can uh, ask Alexandra who was there, uh, how kind of what. Uh, went into making this decision that the information about uh, that would, could protect um, uh, users from ooze was worth collecting 
with appropriate uh, uh, privacy uh, uh, constraints. And this is where kind of rapport, uh, which was based on, uh, on randomized response and like had uh, several levels of differential, differential privacy, which I'm not going to go into, uh, when it was deployed. And it's been um, operated by Google for uh, a few years. Now it's uh, kind of, uh, it's, it's being ramped down. It's still uh, like, I think it's part of current, uh, like, uh, 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 most recent versions of Chrome, but I don't think there's a, uh, uh, it will be there for uh, much longer. Uh, we hope to uh, replace it with better, uh, uh, better mechanisms for protecting privacy. But um, uh, for now, uh, so I'll skip description of rapport. Uh, and uh, I'll say that um, uh, kind of it was uh, uh, a uh, because it was a first deployment of local differential privacy uh, by the industry. Uh, uh, there was a, uh, a very concerted effort on uh, getting the message out of reaching out to the privacy advocates, to journalists, telling our story. Uh, a technical paper uh, appeared uh, at uh, CCS. I think it was very valuable that, uh, like it, uh, uh, it found its it's, it found its audience and it was peer-reviewed and like it put a stamp of approval on this entire project. Uh, the white paper got updated and uh, contained reference to the uh, to the CCS paper. I think it was kind of atypical for privacy policies to <laughs> uh, have references to. Uh, uh, to, to actually uh, research research papers, uh, it had like a, a giant success within the Chrome developers uh, who uh, just like loved it and used it to collect uh, many signals beyond what uh, our uh, kind of what uh, we initially anticipated. Uh, and uh, you may have seen uh, uh, like. Uh, uh, this screenshot taken from a Apple's uh, WWDC uh, developers conference where Apple announced that they uh, would be using differential privacy uh, for similar application and in a somewhat similar model, like local differential private model. And then uh, uh, more recently, uh, Microsoft announced that uh, they would be using uh, local differential privacy for a telemetry in Windows 10 and like there are full many details on their blog post and I kind of uh, I, I think they're going to measure usage of apps uh, the frequency the time of engagement with apps in Windows 10 but like I think you should better serve reading their blog and with this I conclude Questions for Julian? <laughs> uh, Helen? I'm so curious about this. 